there's a bunch of discussion in Massachusetts and New York about the offshore wind projects, about the viability of them, mostly, that as inflation has risen and the cost of everything has gone up and there's a, also a big demand for offshore wind turbines, that the the companies and the projects that are already sort of developed are going to have huge cost increases while they've been locked into PPAs that they signed a year or two or three ago. And the operators and owners of these sites are getting really nervous about it. In Massachusetts, it has been volleyed back and forth between the state and the project owners as what they're going to do. The state, Massachusetts, has been reluctant to do anything. So once they assign a PPA, they're not going to change it. No matter how many times uh, an operator or developer has come to the state, they just bounce them out the door every time. Well, that's now coming to a head. I think we all discussed probably several months ago that they're all just going to default. They're just going to take the penalty and default because you can't force them to build a farm that they're going to lose money on. Well, it's all come to a head. So uh, the wind farms in in Massachusetts are seeking to terminate their purchase power agreements. Uh, And that includes Commonwealth Wind, who may be forfeiting $48 million, and South Coast Wind, uh, which may be forfeiting $60 million. And the theory is, is that money will go back to the, to the electricity buyers, people like me. Uh, the wind farm developers cite inflation, rising interest rates, of course, supply chain disruptions, the war in Ukraine as the reasons why their projects can no lo- longer be financed. And so the, they're essentially saying, hey, look, we're going to terminate. We're just Fine us, we're fine with it, and we're going to reapply for the next round of bidding, of which there is. Okay, so Massachusetts is opening another round of bidding, and what they have done is kind of lifted up the PPA prices. They haven't uh, put a cap on them necessarily, but what they've also done is they made the amount of gigawatts they're going to purchase envelop these previous two projects that would have been tied into the previous PPA. So I think they're allowing like 3.6 gigawatts in the purchase, of which like. 2.4 2.4 or is Commonwealth and South Coast. <laughs> so they're allowing Commonwealth and South Coast to rebid into this new bidding process. And I think they will probably win because how many people, how many companies are going to be able to bid? There's like three or four companies that could possibly bid into that PPA auction. Aren't these the same sites that saw such such ridiculous prices when we, you know, we followed the auctions on this podcast. So now they've cited a bunch of unforeseen reasons why the projects are unprofitable. But did anybody say, hey, we overpaid? Was it, you know, or we wouldn't, we wouldn't pay that much again and we won't pay that much now that we know, you know, the true um, finances of, a, of one of these projects? Yeah, but you, you remember the time in which the, they bid into those projects is that inflation was essentially zero. And the interest rates in the States are at like, what, 3.19 was standard? And it's up at seven, seven now? Yeah, but I mean, okay, so I'm I'm looking to buy a, a house at the moment and I have been for a few years. So I was looking when um, interest rates were at historic lows. I didn't plan for, you know, the project of buying a house. And in Australia, our um, interest rates, our mortgages have very variable interest rates. So you can't just say, oh, uh, interest rates are at historic lows now. And I'm sure that they will remain that way for the duration of my loan. Like you say, OK, they're at, at historic rates now. I have to at least be able to afford this um, this mortgage if they go back up to average. Um Why wouldn't a project developer on a larger scale, not for a home interest rate, but um, they're being stung by the exact thing that, you know, me and my partner were able to foresee that and not overstretch ourselves on a, you know, a mortgage we couldn't afford. Why weren't these project developers able to look in their crystal ball and say things don't stay at historic lows forever? It's it's very frustrating to to watch because you're 100 percent correct, Rosemary. These the people that are employed by these companies are, you know, they have some very smart economists on the staff um, that should be planning these things. Um, but they at this stage are now just throwing up their hands and saying, like, nothing we could nothing we could have foreseen, nothing we can do about it now. We're pulling out. We're going to redo. And and to be honest with you, the Commonwealth win, I'm looking back at the bullet points here, forty eight million dollar penalty. W- w- that's peanuts, to be honest with you. Right. When the, when this wind farm stands to make billions over its lifetime, forty eight million right now is nothing. Pay the fine, redo your PPA, and you'll make it back in the first couple of years. 
I guess that's the reality of it. They they saw it as, you know, we don't want to miss out on this. We don't have enough information yet no, now to know if it's a, a good project, but we at least want the chance to go ahead with it. The fines aren't that bad. We're willing to pay that for, you know, just to be to be in it if it turns out to be good. Um, and they probably knew, you know, if it doesn't work out for us, it won't work out for anyone. And so things will have to be renegotiated. That's I, I guess that that's what they saw. I agree with you, Rosemary. I got to say that this isn't this isn't one of those things. It's like the CEO woke up this morning and we had a panicked email. Oh, my God, what are we going to do about this PPA price? And do this like this is this has been a playbook. There's been a playbook around this and a flow chart decision tree that's three years old that they're just following now. In, in the state of Massachusetts, there's been a lot of discussion about cutting off uh, someone who has, quote unquote, defaulted on a project from bidding on future projects, that came and went. <laughs> and, and the legislature um, and the representatives there have really changed their tune. I listened to a podcast today where they had a couple representatives talking about this in particular. They said, well, we, we can't close the door because there's only really four or five companies that can offer power, offshore power to Massachusetts. If you cut off one or two, well, you're just going to raise the price because everybody's going to see that and just bid higher. So we we can't do that, which is like, duh, yeah, sure. Uh, and then the question from the interviewer was, well, won't this raise the prices of electricity in Massachusetts? And the obvious answer is yes, right? It has to. Uh, the representative's response is, well, global warming, we're all going to be, you know, the oceans are going to rise and Nantucket's going to be under six feet of water. And uh, we're going to create all these jobs in Massachusetts and New England from all the offshore wind jobs. I think both of those are not great answers because I don't think Massachusetts in general has seen a lot of job creation from any wind at all. And being in Massachusetts and being involved in the wind industry, I can tell you we've had zero sales in Massachusetts, absolute zero, and zero contact with the government involved in promoting wind. Zippo. Uh, so you, it's sad. It's really sad. Do I think that there is an opportunity there? There, sh there should be, you'd think. That's a hard ROI pill to swallow for the, the people in Massachusetts. Yeah, our prices, yeah, our power prices are more than likely going to go up. What do we get out of it? A warm feeling? We may have some jobs, maybe. Yeah, it's not, it's not, the whole thing doesn't make any sense. At the same time, they're, they're promoting uh, hydro power. There's a, a cable that's coming from Canada with hydropower that's going to run into Massachusetts. So they're, they're big proponents of that. And yeah, more power, the better. I, it's renewable energy. <laughs> Let's do that too. It just seems like Massachusetts is stuck in a never-ending saga of uh, can't get out of their own way. Mm -hmm.